Hello, my name is John Rose, and I have created a very special teaching tool to help everyone solve most of our problems, and I've also perfected a three-step process to help everyone solve most of our problems. And both of these things I've done have to do with taking two tests in order to use logic to solve our problems. The first test is the simplest of all tests and it's the one we don't do. This is how they trick us. If we don't take the first step test, it's real easy to get lost in the details. So the second test has to do with the details or the specifics or what's known in logic as the contents. And piece 8.2 in a special teaching tool I created, you can look at the uh, description box below and look at the ultimate schematic to learn more about this and the, the ultimate solution. Uh, but piece 8.2 is where we use the wrong approach and that's where we go looking for logical fallacies and systems within valid structures. So what did I just say? I said there's two tests we have to take. And the first test has to do with the structure, the second test has to do with the contents or the specifics or the details. And if the problem's outside our control, we got to look at the details. But if the problem's within our control, we don't want to, you know, the devil wants us to look at the details, right? We don't want to get focused on the details. And that's where my three-step process or my six-box system comes into play, the ultimate schematic, which is really a three-box system with pluses and minuses. Over the years, I tried to figure out a clever name for this, and, I, I, and I, that's when I realized, well, there are three, three main events on two event horizons, and then I said, oh, there's three stages of knowledge on the right path and three stages of knowledge on the wrong path. Or you could say there are three stages of knowledge uh, 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 and there are three stages of false knowledge. Uh, but what we, use, what we want to use this for are the last two stages. This is where cause and effect come into play. And this is where we have to start because this ties into logic. This ties into the first test. A simple way to understand these two tests is one test deals with the tracks and it's always one way. It's an ordered pair. One comes before the other. A sequence cannot be reversed. You see that? That's what an ordered pair is. It's not complicated. A and B are ordered pairs. One and two are ordered pairs. Cause and effect are ordered pairs. Action and reaction are ordered pairs. So we need to understand this process to use the structure to, to pass the first test. And this is how we're being tricked and fooled and not, and they call, actually in Latin it's called monus ponens. We're putting the cart before the horse. So the first test we take is we have to start with the structure. We've got to look at the tracks. Are the tracks going the right direction? And if they're not, we can be tricked and fooled and take the first step in the wrong direction. Imagine looking for a sunset, but you start off heading east. East? Sunset? No. So that's all you have to do to misdirect everybody. And the people who rule the world are masters of misdirection, masters of illusion. They're magicians. They're con artists. They are psychopaths. You study what a psychopath is, they're all con artists. Not all con artists are psychopaths, but every psychopath you meet will be a con artist. They're, they're, they're habitual liars. They have no empathy. They haven't feeling any remorse. That's why we can't understand how the world works because no one can relate to these sick people. No one thinks like them because no one would ever think of doing what they do. But they know how to trick us and fool us because we're sick. We're disconnected. We're easily fooled, as in the three-legged stool analogy, but analogy by Sal Linsky, uh, where you have big money, uh, the governments, the corporations, got the government, and then the people. And if the people don't get organized, the other two will, and, they'll, and they'll, they can be used to control us. So we're being controlled, we're being manipulated. It all has to do with our belief system. Don't trust anything in your belief system. I've been trying to illustrate how you can't prove, you can't trust us. That's why I'm bringing up odd, bizarre examples. I know everyone's going to go, oh my God, I don't want to, I'm going to unsubscribe to this guy now. I can't believe he thinks like that. And the point is you have to realize you can't trust your belief system. So you have to use logic to solve our problems. You start with the structure. Is it going the right way? So when we look at our problems in the third stage of knowledge or what we got in the third stage of knowledge on the wrong path, uh, they're either within our control or outside of control. If they're within our control, then that's where we have to stay. And that's what our so-called experts are, are only trained for. Allopathic doctors are only good for treating the symptom in the third stage of knowledge. And they're in 106, right before that, I explained that in one of my other videos, uh, where they're just blockers that, that interfere with the body's communication process. But if the problem's within our control, we got to understand the structure of solving problems. If the problem is within our control, we got to look at what comes before that. It's the cause. It's what we do. It's our lifestyle choices. And then using my special teaching tool, we realize, well, we can go one step further back, and that's the first stage of knowledge. That's our belief system. It's interesting. When I created this, I found this the most amazing knowledge 26 years ago. When I found it, uh, it changed my life forever. I, I finally figured out why I was given a gift, and they told me this in, in eighth grade. 
saying, look, you got this gift, you, you're, you, haven't even made it to level, you haven't even made it to level one yet, you're already at level four. You know things that no one's ever taught you. So I knew I was given this gift, and when I came out of that principal's office that day, uh, I asked myself immediately, and I remember the answer as if it happened yesterday. I said, why am I given this gift? And I could only come up with one good answer, or anything came to my mind. You're going to use this gift someday to help people. Well, that's what I've done. My gift to humanity is based on a gift that was given to me. I had the ability to make things that appear to be complicated and things that are really actually quite simple. I could just, I have this gift. I can look at a bunch of things. I go, oh, well, if I do this and this and this, it could be this. And, and no one ever taught me how to do it. It's just how my brain works. So my gift to humanity is a special teaching tool to help us learn. Even Buckminster Fuller said, if you want to help people, don't give them the knowledge. Uh, give them a tool so they can get the knowledge. And that's what I'm trying to do with my tool. So I created a special teaching tool to explain everything, every piece of the puzzle. And I've done that. You can go to the ultimate schematic, look at the description down below, and the ultimate solution playlist, 11 parts. Nine of those describe all 281 pieces that I've identified. And you don't need to know any of this. You just have to understand these three stages of knowledge, and we don't want to be tricked and fooled. So the first, the, the first thing I did, or the, the main thing, I, the thing I created that is my gift to y'all, is a tool so that you can make sure we don't get tricked and we don't get, we don't get fooled. So what we want to do is do what Sherlock Holmes would do. You exclude the impossible. That's the purpose of my gift. Get, use my, my gift. Take, use the first test to look at all the systems and protocols out there and give that test to those people. And what you're going to find is what are they doing? They're dealing with the effect. They're in the third stage of knowledge. Well, if the problem's outside your control, that's where we need to be. But if the problem's within our control, we've got to use my tool to work backwards and look at what we do. And the problem is we don't have the, or we lack the knowledge to be able to differentiate between a problem that's within our control and outside our control. So when we look at what we do, we don't think we're doing anything wrong. See, this is the problem. Most of us are doing things we think are okay, but they're not okay. They're wrong. They're the reason why we have so many problems. But we're addicted to these mistakes. We're in denial about it. It's one of the most difficult messages I've ever had to, to help people understand because people literally shut their brain off when they don't want to hear something uh, that they don't want to hear. That's why I, I initially told my message without even using the word food and diet. So we're making five main mistakes. Why did I do that? I'm being vague on purpose to keep people from shutting down their frontal lobe. So as soon as you mention the word food, for a lot of people, they tune out. Now, if I want to be more popular, I'll just focus on certain diets and then I'll have a following. But I, I'm not as concerned with those people that already know this, I'm trying to get all those other bozos out there that have no idea. And again, you shut off their brain. So my special teaching tool will, before we even look at the specifics, and that's the key, piece 8.2, we use the wrong approach whenever we go looking for the logical fallacies in the specifics or in the details or in the contents. Don't start there. So you've got logic and you've got the train is the tracks, uh, or, the, or the structure is the tracks, and then the train is the contents. So you got tracks and a train, we got the structure and we got the specifics, the, 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 the contents, the details. And if the problem is within our control, don't get lost in the details. Don't go down that rabbit hole. The devil's in the details. They want you to focus on all these, what I label as 103s, problems that are within our control. But remember, we lack the wisdom to know the, dif the difference between a problem that is within our control and a problem that is outside of control. And this is evident everywhere you go. Got cancer, go to your doctor, go to your doctor, go to your doctor. Bullshit, bullshit, bullshit. These people are not experts when it comes to lifestyle problems. And guess what? Most of what we suffer for are lifestyle related. So we change what we do. The problem is there's too much conflicting information. So we start with the structure. We make sure that they're not using an invalid structure. So what we do is we can exclude the impossible, realize, oh my God, every system out there is treating the symptoms. So they fail that test. I don't need to look at their contents. You see how simple this makes everything? We just made things extremely simple now because now we don't have to go looking for a logical fallacy in a system that might not even have one. Oh, I can't find a flaw. Well, wait a second. They failed the first test, don't you see? So use my special teaching tool to uh, just simply understand the three stages of the knowledge and that way you won't get tricked and fooled and, and get stuck in the third stage when we need to be looking at what we do and what we think. So I've created a three uh, or a three box system of pluses and minuses, a six box system, a special teaching tool, the ultimate schematic to prove the structure. And then I perfected a three step process so that you can prove the specifics or the details or the contents. There's very little I can say to convince enough people that what I'm saying is true, but every one of y'all can prove this to yourself. The problem is it's difficult to evaluate things as long as we're filthy. Remember the old saying, you don't put new wine in an old container? 
And it reminds me of a story uh, of, of Arnold Eric. When I met this one woman, I told her everything I was doing. I said, I'm, docu I'm doing these juice fast. I'm documenting all the stuff that comes down to me. She goes, wow, you remind me of Arnold Eric. And she handed me all of his books. And I went home and read every one of them. And I said, I had to go out and get them because I love marking up books and, and writing marginal notes and referencing and everything. And I, and I couldn't do that with her books. So I went out immediately and got those books. And what Arnold Eric did is he said that the only people who can truly evaluate a good diet are ones who are pure and clean. So he would do a water fast. And why did he do this? Well, he had Bright's disease. He healed his Bright's disease by doing water fasting and eating mostly fruit. And he died in 1925, so before then, we knew everything was much better grown and, and taken care of, so it was much more nutritious. But he understood one simple fact, is that you got to be clean to evaluate foods. And what he did is he experimented on himself. And what he would do is he would... He would do a water fast, get clean inside, and said, well, let me try diet A, diet B, diet C. Each different time I would do the fast. And I'll cut on myself, I'll record how much it hurt and how much it bled and how fast it healed. And with diet A, man, it hurt a bunch. It bled a lot, took forever to heal. But guess what happened when he, when he used the diet that healed himself? It hardly hurt at all, it barely bled, and it healed immediately, practically, or right away. So. The point of this story is you got to get clean before you can really evaluate the contents. Once again, you start with the structure. Use my tool to make sure you don't get tricked and fooled and believe in allopathic doctors or, or acupuncture or homeopathic uh, uh, medicine or Ayurvedic medicine or traditional Chinese medicine. They're all in the third stage, uh, but they're doing it because you can't change everything overnight. Some of the things that are doing that we have to realize applies to piece 35. I, I've explained that in this other video. You can look down below or I'll uh, add a, uh, a link here you can click to where I explain what that's all about. But otherwise, these systems are not the solution. The, the, we have to realize that if, if, these, if these problems are, are self-inflicted, then we've got to change what we're doing. So you got to get clean first. That's number one. And the problem with water fasting nowadays is it's not as safe as it used to be, and I'll explain all that in this video. Click here and you can go to that video. Uh, but the main thing is, is just too many environmental toxins. It's not as safe for most of us. It used to be the best preparation for a better way of life. Now we have to prepare for it. So the best thing to do is modify what used to be the best preparation. And that's the first of my three-step process. Uh, look down below and look for the first step and go to that link, and that will be a seminar I gave explaining how to do the first of this three-step process. Uh, there's really only one thing we have to do. Uh, there's, we have to satisfy two groups of needs, but most of us are not willing and able to do that, which is why I added two preliminary steps, uh, thereby perfecting this three-step process that I'm telling you about. Uh, the first step addresses the wellness issue, but most importantly, it prepares the body so that you can then find out what is the, the right food. When you go back, when you do a, a long, extended, properly conducted solid food vacation, where we drink nothing but a gallon or two of, of juices, depend upon what condition you have, those vary somewhat. But the thing is, is when you do that for the appropriate length of time, you'll finally then be in a position to reset your feedback system. And you'll go back and eat some foods and you'll go, my God, what was I thinking? Of course, now some foods are designed to make you addicted and you're going, oh boy, yeah, I remember this. And you're going to be addicted. So you got to be careful. Uh, but the point is, is when you do go back to eating the food we're meant to eat, food tastes so good, your taste buds quiver. In fact, when I eat now, about half the time that I eat, uh, my taste buds just start quivering. It's like, whoa, that's so intense. I love it. Uh, you know, I, I used to have uh, a short-term relationship with the food I used to eat, and that's all I had. And now I still have that short-term relationship with the food I eat. I love it when I'm eating it. I even say, jokingly to all my food, who wants to become me? <laughs> Which mango is it out there? You, yeah, you look like the, the one that's ready for me. Uh, but the thing is, is, uh, is, you know, we are what we eat. So if you don't choose the right food, what's going to happen? It's your, your, your body's going to let you know right away. And, and if you do, but when you choose the right food, what happens is you develop a long-term relationship with your food. So yeah, I have a short-term relationship with my food. I really like it when I'm eating it. But now, the moment I'm eating it, I realize, man, I, I asked which one wanted to be me, and, and now I feel like you're part of me, and now you're the, I know you're the reason why when I wake up, I just jump out of bed. I'm so excited. I tell you, man, I can't wait to get out there and find someone who's receptive to this information. And yes, I know a lot of people aren't, and this is one reason why I always go back and do that first step every so often so I can be reminded how much fun it, it is. There's not, nothing feels better than having a completely empty food tube. You finally realize what it's like not to have 
what Victor Hugo called a serpent that lives within us because it's shaped like the colon. And if it's bad crap, it's going to seep back into the body and it's going to affect us in ways you can't understand until you get rid of it. In fact, when I got rid of a 20-pound cesspool I had, I literally crawled out of a rut I didn't even know I was in. And I was at a, a, state, a, a time in my life where uh, I didn't think I could take my life better. Physically, I was put in seven, eight hours a day. I felt like I, I could run and jump over that eight-foot fence over there. Uh, I, I felt that strong because I worked out so much. But that was nothing because when I got rid of that 20-pound cesspool, when I bumped up my biophotons and I felt connected to everything around me, uh, uh, everything in my life changed physically, mentally, emotionally. Communally, I felt the connection to everything. And I realized, God, if everyone could feel this good, what would happen to this planet? I know what would happen. No one would join the progerian class and allow the system to continue the way it is. We couldn't be controlled. Sal Linsky's three-legged stool analogy, there's only one way for us to get organized. It ain't gonna be done mentally. We've got the wrong mentality and there's only one way to change our mentality. We've got to get reconnected, which is what the first of my three-step process does. So if you haven't done this yet, what are you waiting for? Come on, man. Take one week out of your life. Come on, I challenge you. One week out of your life to, to at least have the light bulb go off over your head. And I guarantee you it will. I've coached thousands of people and everyone's blown away at the fact that nothing's going in but things are coming out. And you want to go the distance. It took me two years to figure that one out. And when you do go the distance, you'll have an aha moment, especially if you have a lot of health problems, because most, if not every one of them are going away, are going to go away. Now, remember, there's two groups of needs we have to satisfy. The first step addresses the first group of needs. But when properly done, it also addresses the second group of needs, because we have to realize that plays a role. But the point here is, after we do the first step, we still might not be where we need to be because we have damaged our body. This is where that second group of needs comes into play. See, we've made mistakes, and that's damaged ourselves and society and the environment. That's why we got to do damage control. The society screwed up. Look what we got. Who, someone else owns our airways? <laughs> why can our airways be bought by corporations to brainwash us? Their ways belong to every one of us. All of these resources belong to all of us. We have rights. We should not be given privileges and laws, and that's a whole other video series. Uh, I could start if I get around to doing it. And we need to understand that we should all file a class action lawsuit. Virtually every contract we've entered is designed to take away our control. Again, most of us have no idea how many false beliefs we have. That's why I say, question everything. Don't believe anything I say, but you can test it. Try this out for yourself. And again, one week is all I'm asking. It's a challenge. I, I challenge you, if you haven't done this yet, one week, if you don't want to invest in a juicer, do the master, uh, Stanley Burrell's Master Cleanser, the Lemonade Fast, where you drink nine to 12 glasses of lemonade drink using two tablespoons of lemon juice or lime juice, two tablespoons, the original recipe called for gray bee maple syrup. Burrell said if you have diabetes, use blackstrap molasses. I started using agave nectar raw when it first came out because it was good quality. Now it's somewhat questionable, questionable but I've worked with people with type to diabetes and day one on this program using the raw agave nectar, they got off their medication immediately because it relieves the pressure in the lymph system. So you could do this for one week. It's not going to be as exciting because all you're doing is drinking the same thing, but it's very tasty. You got these two tablespoons of something really sweet and sour. Then you add something hot to it, uh, a tenth of a teaspoon of cayenne pepper, which is like a dash. First one, just put a pinch in there. You don't want to be overwhelmed by it. Uh, and then if it's not that hot, you put several dashes into it. Uh, and then you add 10 ounces of medium warm water and it's important that the water is warm but not boiling. You don't want to just destroy and go above the 118 mark or so and destroy the, the lemon juice and lime juice. But you, you do want to make cayenne pepper tea out of it, so to speak, and you want to drink it warm ideally also. Do that for, for a week. I, I see people all the time in the store and, and, and they do it periodically because they see, they do it, they see all this crap coming out of them, they lose a lot of weight, they feel better, look better, even though they're not getting everything they need because it's a very limited form of fasting. Uh, I find that most of these people I meet usually only go 10 days and I go, oh my God, you have no idea. I've documented everything I've done and I didn't start seeing really old stuff come out of me until day 11. Day 10 or day 11 is right when I saw it. Remember, I've documented everything I did when I did this. This is why I'm so passionate. I don't have to rely on my memory. I can go back and look at any day and go, oh my God, I got 14 ounces out of me that day. And look, I tried to draw pictures of it. Didn't have a camera back then. So I'm telling you, you're in for a treat. Do the lemonade drink, fast for one week. And you know, when I, when I see these people, I always tell them, 
you know, you don't have to be limited to that lemonade drink. I can understand why you'd want to stop after 10 days because you're only drinking one thing. You've got the right attitude, it's a piece of cake. But still, you're only drinking one thing, but there's no reason why you can't do half lemonade and, and half juices. But then if you go that direction, you're not getting everything you need and that's where you got to supplement. It's much better to do nothing but freshly made juices. And, and I explain all that in my seminar. So look down below where I have the first of my three-step process, a seminar I gave, and you can do the first step. Uh, to give you a quick summary of what I've just gone over, uh, there's two tests that we have to take. The first test, I've given you a tool to take it. The second test, I've given you a protocol you can try for yourself. Do the first of my three-step process so you can prove the specifics. Get a clean body and then look at the five main mistakes we made and determine if any one of them are really not a mistake. See, most of us are not in a position to evaluate these five mistakes. A lot of us are going to say, oh, the second one's not a mistake. Oh, the third one's not a mistake. You know, we're going to really cling to those. First one, oh, don't tell me that. That's poppycock. That's what made us so great. That's what's poppycock. You see, this message threatens the power of that be more than anything else. That's why you see all these negative reviews on it. That's why you see it being attacked. That's why you see internet shills everywhere influencing the useful idiots to keep this message from gaining any momentum. And then they throw people in that are going to shoot inside the tent. You know, if two people are in the same canoe fight, the, the canoe tips over. So there shouldn't be any infighting amongst us. And yet I recognize this, and I even gave it piece number 12. It, there's a lack of continuity in our movement. And what I find interesting is it's just as difficult to get a vegetarian to go raw vegan as it is to get a meat eater to go vegetarian. And yet the vegetarians are many times sicker than the standard population because they're eating too much processed foods and their omega-6 omega-3 ratio is way off. You don't have that problem with the raw vegan diet unless you overdo nuts. And you can actually compensate by that by adding some flax seeds to balance out to three and six, but the best solution is to be aware that we don't need a whole lot of fat. If you're as active as I am, I don't mind bumping up the fat a little bit because I'm gonna have the base of a lot of micronutrients just to refill my fuel tank. But when, I'm a, when I have an active day and I need a lot of calories, I don't always keep it all low fat. I don't see any problem, and, I, and I've been watching everything that's going in and going out, and, and uh, it can be a problem. Even too many avocados can be a problem because they go through sticky and they can clog things up. So what we want to do, get clean, prove the diet out for yourself. There's only one diet we humans were meant to eat. There's a species-specific diet for us just like there is for everyone. It doesn't include cooked food. It doesn't include animals. If it includes grains, you're going to sprout them. Processed foods doesn't enter the picture unless you're going to juice the foods and do something temporarily, temporary so you can see what you're missing and then be part of the hero's journey, be a trim tab to society, get us out of this hell we're in. Then there's a time to process foods. And then the chemicals have no place in this whatsoever. The, the GMOs, this is all designed to kill us. When you study the people who rule the world, look at Bertrand Russell back in 1953. He starts, he starts off saying, diet, injections, injunctions. Diet, grow the food on artificial fertilizers. Voila, it's magic. It looks like it's food, but it has 83% less biophotons. Okay, that's one bad thing we do with chemicals. Uh, the fertilizers, uh, I mean the pesticides. You know what, polio was caused by DDT. Uh, it wasn't caused by a virus, I'm telling you. I, I mistakenly put that disease in with all the other diseases that vaccines supposedly eradicated that were really due to poor sanitation. And you can see graphs from 1860 to 1960, it's a steady decline. It was obvious that it was a problem with poor sanitation, but polio was different. It was caused by the drugs, so pesticides. So, so those things are horrible. They don't enter the picture anywhere. The, the artificial fertilizers, the, the pesticides, and then the GMOs. Again, Richard Russell, diet, in injections, that's the vaccines, injunctions, can't even grow your own garden. We have to be aware that the people who rule the world know they can't change things too fast. That's why they established the Fabian Society long ago, uh, over 100 years ago, realizing that, that if we change too fast, people will wake up. So we got a long-term plan. They've been slowly changing our whole mindset through commercials and TV shows. Very few people realize that their views about certain subjects have been totally contrived. People want you to think and believe a certain way. Um, uh, and, and, uh, and, 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 that, and again, if we don't understand, if we don't get organized and realize that there is somebody out there trying to take us down and keep us where we are, uh, we won't understand the best way to defeat them. And I've said that before. They're a reflection of us. 
We have to do damage control, but the only way to get rid of them is to get rid of or change what we are in the bell. We don't go after the edges of the bell, as I mentioned before. We go at, we change the, 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 the people. We have to change. We got to become the best that we can be. So you don't use the, uh, the poisons, the pesticides, the GMOs, the injections, uh, and then the injunctions. And this is all how they're going to control us in the future. Again, the people who rule the world have been paying attention to us for a long time. They have access to something we don't have, accurate history. We have no idea what happened last century. It's all a lie. Everything you read about the deadly flu epidemic, everything you read about World War One and Two, all the things that killed us, and these are important topics we need to understand. These are all lies to take to keep us where we are, and we got to challenge our belief system, uh, and and realize that that's what that's partly what's keeping us where we are. So uh, it's interesting when you look at the Fabian Society. I mentioned George Orwell the other day. Uh, Aldous Huxley also. Both these two gentlemen were part of the Fabian Society, so the Brave New World in 1984 did not come out of the imaginations of these two men. They were part of the Fabian Society. They knew what was going on. And, uh, and Huxley was an insider that stated an insider. Orwell wanted to help warn everybody what's going on. They killed him the same year to set an example, saying, we'll let you write that book. We're not afraid of what these idiots out there do, because they're never going to figure it out. But as an example, everyone else will kill you and they'll know not to follow up on what you did. So we have to take responsibility. We have to question all of our beliefs that take away our responsibility. You can use my special teaching tool and look at the structure and realize, my God, we're, we're putting the cart before the horse. We don't want to do that. The content's too confusing. There's more confusion on this subject than there is on anything else. I even did a video, Are You Confused? Look down below in the description box if you want to watch that. Uh, so what do we do? You do what Aristotle would say. Believe only your own experience. There's no fact like a fact learned from your own life. But first, you don't want to put new wine in an old container. You got to clean out your system, prepare it so you can then understand what is the ideal diet. And that will take you to the first of my three-step process. And, and I've coached too many people. I've done it myself too many times. And I know one thing for sure. When you do this, you are in for a treat.